If you have solar panels on your home, then chances are you end up exporting a lot of the energy you generate back out to the grid. Home batteries are getting a lot of publicity at the moment, but there are other ways of storing that energy to use later. One of the oldest and easiest ways is to store it as heat, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. There are many different solar diverter products on the market that allow you to divert your solar energy into storage of some sort, but generally they all work in the same basic way. They detect when you're exporting power to the grid and turn on your hot water tank's immersion heater, throttling its power down to match your export. Each manufacturer has its own unique selling point, and they all tend to rely on you having a hot water tank and an immersion heater. I did a bit of an experiment and monitored the amount of gas needed to heat my hot water tank using the boiler. As you can see in this graph, it used 4.2 kilowatt hours worth of gas. That took the tank from 22 degrees to about 50 degrees. To get up to 55 degrees, it needed another 2 kilowatt hours, but I'm going to play fair here and say that only 4.2 kilowatt hours was needed because if I was using the boiler daily to heat the tank, it would never drop down as far as 20 degrees. Now, if we look at using an immersion heater instead, my early morning boost used 1.16 kilowatt hours, and that took the water temperature from 48 degrees up to 60 degrees. Okay, so the big difference here is that the gas boiler was heating the whole tank, and that temperature measurement is taken about one third of the way up from the bottom of the tank. The immersion heater, however, is top mounted and only heats the top third of the tank, and it, the temperature is measured about a third of the way down from the top. So you are getting less hot water, but it's plenty for a couple of showers in the morning and certainly works out cheaper than gas. Let's talk a bit more about the solution controlling that immersion heater though. I chose a product from a British company called MyEnergy. If you're watching this video, then chances are you're already probably quite familiar with their products. They make an electric car charger called the Zappi and a solar diverter called Eddy. They've also recently announced a new home battery called Libby. MyEnergy have bought out a new version of Eddy since I installed mine. The new version has Wi-Fi built in, but my older version requires a dedicated hub in order to connect it to the internet. The installation is quite simple. Eddy sits near your hot water tank, your immersion heater element wires directly into Eddy, and the power supply for your immersion heater instead powers Eddy. I then have a hub in my garage that's hardwired to my network. Finally, Eddy needs to be able to monitor your home's power feed so as it knows when you're importing or exporting. You can either connect a MyEnergy CT clamp directly to Eddy and run it over Cat5e cable to your meter tails, or in my case, and I suspect the case of nearly everyone else, you can use MyEnergy's Harvey. Harvey is quite clever. You wire your CT clamps into it and it pairs with Eddy wirelessly. Harvey doesn't need an external power supply at all. It harvests whatever it needs from the CT clamps. Now, at a bare minimum, you need one CT clamp and that must be around your home's main live meter tail. But there's a small issue you might experience if you go with that minimum. If you're exporting or importing power, then there's a current flowing through your main meter tail. That current powers the Harvey. But if that power is being diverted into your hot water or battery, then there may be no current flowing through your meter tail at all. In that situation, your Harvey suddenly has no power. To avoid that, you should also put a CT clamp around your solar feed and, if you have one, your battery feed too. Harvey lets you connect up to three CT clamps and connecting all three will give you the best data experience in the MyEnergy app too. There are several advantages of the Eddy compared to other solar diverter solutions. If you have a Zappi car charger, then it makes a lot of sense to use Eddy too, because the two work really well together. You can adjust the priorities between them, diverting power to your hot water or your car, depending on what you need at that moment in time. Secondly, Eddy supports two different resistive loads, so you could have two immersion heaters in one tank, or another heating system wired into it, it can work quite well with some heat pump systems too. Which brings me to the third advantage. There's an optional extra sensor and relay board that you can install inside the Eddy that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. This add-on board includes a couple of relays that can be used to turn on other kit around your home to eat up that excess solar energy. It lets you nicely integrate it with a number of heat pump systems too, but the reason I installed this add-on board is because it lets you connect temperature sensors to it that allow you to monitor the temperature of your hot water tank. 
Installing the add-on board is straightforward, but a bit tricky. You need to open up the eddy, take out the display board, and then fit the add-on board to the main board, kind of in between the screen and the main board. You can then connect a PT1000 temperature probe to the add-on board. My hot water tank is an old copper one covered in a few centimetres of insulation foam. So I poked a hole in the foam near the top of the tank very gently with a screwdriver so as the probe would fit very snugly directly against the wall of the copper tank. I put a bit of thermal compound on the end of the probe just to help with its contact against the tank and improve the reliability of that reading. Add on to the Home Assistant integration. Now, this is where I need to point out the biggest disadvantage of the My Energy family of products. Remote management and monitoring of Eddy and Zappi is only available over the internet. There is no local control of it at all. This means that you are very reliant on both your own internet connection and My Energy's servers being up and running. The My Energy integration is not built into Home Assistant and you need to install it using hacks. Make sure that you have hacks installed first. You can follow my guide uh, on how to do that if you need to. Once you have hacks installed, open up the main hacks page, click on integrations, and then the blue explore and download repositories button in the bottom right. Search for my energy. You should see it appear in the list and click on it. Then you'll need to click on the blue download button and download again. You'll need to restart Home Assistant before you can configure it. So do that using the developer tools. Just check your configuration and then click on restart and restart. Once restarted, go down to settings, devices and services and click on the blue add integration button in the bottom right hand corner. Search again for my energy and click on it from the list. It'll take a little while to set up, but uh, eventually you'll be asked to input your hub serial number and API key. You can get your hub serial number either from the My Energy app by tapping on the menu icon in the top left. It will be displayed at the top and labeled hub. Um, or you can log into myaccount.myenergy.com, view my devices, and you'll see it there too. On that same page, you can get your API key by clicking on the advanced button and then clicking generate a new key. Copy and paste this generated key somewhere safe because you'll never be able to see it again, only generate new ones instead. Back over in Home Assistant, paste in your hub serial number and your uh, API key and click on submit. It should detect all of your My Energy devices, so click on Finish, and then you can go to the uh, integration here, click on your three devices or however many you've got, and you should see them populating it. I've got an Eddy, a Harvey, and a Hub. To give you an idea of how this might be useful, I'm gonna quickly show you a couple of automations that are running in my home. Within the My Energy app, you can schedule a boost. So in there, I have set the schedule for one hour at 3.30 a.m. every day. This is during my off-peak energy time. My first automation runs at 5.30 a.m., which is about 30 minutes before my boiler would kick in to heat the hot water tank. If the eddy mode is normal, which means it hasn't been disabled due to us being away or something, then it moves on to check if the water temperature at the top of the tank is above 50 degrees. Uh, if it is, then the automation sets an override on the Evo Home hot water controller for 20 hours. Otherwise, it does nothing and just lets the uh, Evo Home schedule use the gas boiler to heat the water. This is effectively a failsafe. We want to use Eddy to heat the water where possible, but if for some reason that fails, then the gas boiler will take over and I won't be in trouble for lots of cold showers in the morning. So the second automation I want to show you is slightly more complex. On days with decent weather, by the afternoon the hot water would already be up to temperature for free, but on dull crappy days you might need a bit of a boost. This automation runs every afternoon at 4 p.m. and its purpose is to alert you if it thinks the hot water needs a boost. Now, originally this automation would check the temperature and if it was below 50 degrees, it would automatically boost it. But I realized that unless we were planning on having a shower that evening, then that was a bit of a waste of energy. Instead, this automation now sends a message to my Apple Watch. Uh, you can see here, uh, telling me what the current tank temperature is, what the percentage of my home battery is at, and asking me if I'd like to boost the hot water. If I tap on the yes button, 
Uh, you see here it waits for a response to that tap. It then turns on a script which boosts the hot water temperature to 50 degrees. This script sets a boost time of 30 minutes. It then watches the tank temperature until it reaches 49 degrees. It then sets another boost for one minute. So if it takes 16 minutes to get to 50 degrees, then the boost will run for 17 minutes, uh, which means it saves you about 13 minutes of boost time energy compared to if you didn't use this script. And that's it. I hope you found the overview of Eddy useful and managed to find a good use for the integration in Home Assistant. At the very least you should find the data it provides handy and the energy sensors can be used in the Home Assistant energy dashboard too. As always I'll put the configuration for the automations up on my website and a link to that in the description. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, goodbye.